Hi everybody and welcome to our unit on thermodynamics. Uh, we are going to spend just a week on this unit, so it's kind of a shortened unit for us, but um, just to give you a little taste of what thermodynamics is all about. When we talk about thermodynamics and chemistry, we're really going to be looking at um, whether or not a reaction can occur on its own without a lot of outside help. All right, to answer this, we need to look at two things. One we've already looked at, and that's enthalpy, all right? And that's the heat of reaction, that delta H. And then the other is gonna be new to us, and that's called entropy, all right? So we're gonna spend today really talking about entropy, okay? When we say a reaction can just occur on its own, we consider that reaction to be what's known as a spontaneous process. So a spontaneous process um, is a process that can occur without outside intervention, all right? It doesn't necessarily have to be fast. When we hear the word spontaneous, we tend to think fast, but that's not true. Um, it just means, again, it has to happen without outside intervention. So um, an example of that would be rusting, okay? Rusting is actually a pretty slow process where iron and oxygen react, um, but it does happen without outside intervention. All right, so let's take a look at entropy. And entropy is abbreviated as S. You'll usually see it as delta S because of the, um, the uh, change in entropy, all right? It's a measurement of the randomness or the disorder of the particles in the reaction, all right? Um, spontaneous reactions will always move towards an increase in entropy or randomness. All right, and this is due to something called the second law of thermodynamics. All right, second law states, okay, that the disorder in the universe is always increasing. As disorder um, increases, energy is transferred to the less um, usable forms. So what does this mean for us? We're going to be looking at what's known as the delta S for a particular reaction. If it is a positive number, if it's greater than zero, then that tells us that the entropy of that system is going up. It is increasing. All right. The particles that you are forming are becoming technically more chaotic, more random. All right. And that means that the entropy is going up. If we find that it is a negative number, it means that the entropy is going down. So actually the particles in that reaction are becoming more organized. And of course this can absolutely happen. All right, uh, so we wanna look at some of the different instances of this. Okay, so factors that affect entropy and things that we're gonna be asking you to look at. All right, states of matter. Okay, and obviously that has to do with the different temperatures. Um, atomic or molecular complexity how much of the compound you have, and then mixtures, okay? All right, so let's take a look first at states of matter. And this one's nice and straightforward, so I like starting with this, because we can get a good visual of disorder or randomness when it comes to states of matter, all right? Solids are very ordered. They have a lot of structure, so they actually have very low entropies, okay, as opposed to a gas, which we know all about gases. Gases move wherever they want to move, and so they have very high entropy. And then liquid is there in the middle, okay? As we move on, the next thing is complexity of molecules. Entropy increases when you increase atomic complexity, all right? So therefore, what the, all that that means is that the larger the atom you have, the more... Um, the more entropy it's gonna have. The larger the molecule, the more entropy it is going to have, all right? So over on the side, you can see some different organic compounds that we're just comparing here and how their um, entropy values are increasing with increased complexity, okay? You're just getting larger molecules there, all right? Okay, if you have more of a particular sample, well, if you have more of something, there's more chance of those particles being in random places and, you know, having more disorder to them. So if I have, you know, five grams of um, hydrogen gas compared to 10 grams of hydrogen gas, that 10 grams is going to have more entropy. It's going to be more disordered. Okay. Um, another thing that comes up certainly and that we do a lot is dissolving, all right, a solid into a liquid. If I take salt, uh, you know, sodium chloride, table salt, and I compare that solid to what it would be when I dissolve it in water, 
the salt water certainly, and we can easily, easily visualize this, that salt water has a lot more randomness to it, a lot more entropy, okay? All right, so take a look at these practice problems and you can pause the video as you do this and take a look at your notes. For each situation, choose what you think has the greater amount of entropy, all right? Okay, so we're back. Hopefully you went ahead and looked at this. So for letter A, we're comparing liquid mercury to solid mercury, all right? Well, the greater the entropy is always going to be the more disordered or random state. And in this case, that's definitely the liquid, all right? So it'd be liquid mercury. All right, so for letter B, we're comparing C2H4 with c 2 um, H6. All right, so right there, you can see they're both gases, so we're not talking about a difference in um, state, but we're talking about an, a difference in molecular complexity. And the C2H6, that's going to be a, um, a larger molecule, so that one is our uh, the one that, with greater entropy. Okay, sample C. In this case, we're talking about different amounts. So you're talking about the exact same thing, hydrogen, but one mole compared to two. The greater the amount, the greater the entropy. So that's going to be two moles. Letter D is just like the example I was talking about with um, table salt, because that is table salt, whether solid salt or salt water. And salt water is going to be more random. And letter E, we're looking at ammonia versus nit I'm sorry, neon gas. And in that case, ammonia is both a larger molecule and has more atomic complexity. So that's going to be your choice for the greater the um, entropy. All right. Predictive entropy is increasing or decreasing, okay? So you can take a moment and um, pause if you'd like. All right, so solid sugar is added to water, so you are dissolving it. So we're comparing what's happening when I go from the solid substance to an aqueous substance, and in that case, your entropy is certainly increasing. Okay, number two, iodine vapor condenses onto a cold surface forming crystals. Also, we could call this um, depositing, all right, because if I'm going straight into a solid. Well, iodine vapor, so that is a gas, and then it is turning into a solid. So you are making that more ordered, so therefore the entropy is going to go down. Okay, great. Other than just making predictions, we actually are able to do some calculations with this and solve for the overall entropy of the system, okay? And when we do this, we are looking to see whether we get an overall delta AS that's positive or negative, okay? If it's positive, it means that your entropy is going up. If it's negative, it means that your entropy is going down. So to do this, we are going to use this equation here, which is very scary looking, but not difficult at all, all right? So to find your enthalpy, what you're gonna do, and this is the little summation sign, which always makes things scary, you're gonna take the total of the entropies from your products, subtract from that the total, the summation of the entropy from your reactants. And I'm gonna walk you through some of these, okay? Um, entropy is an extensive property, which means that it does matter how much of the substance um, you have. It, again, does matter. All right. Generally, the more complex the molecule, the um, higher the standard entropy value. And we've already talked about that. So in your notes, and hopefully you can read these, um, certainly you can zoom in on them, you are given a bunch of standard molar entropies. You will always be given these. There's no reason to memorize any one of these whatsoever. All right, but we're going to use these. So as I'm going over the practice problems, please know that wh where I got the numbers is from this chart. All right, calculate the entropy change for the following reaction. Okay, so I'm going to take you down here to my work that I've done. So let's take a look at my paper here. So what have I done? I just wanted to kind of show you to begin with. Remember, I want the total of my products, which is my water. All right, now, why do I have a two times the water? Because there is a coefficient of two. That's what the N stood for in that equation that we were looking at before. And then all of that together. And from that, I'm gonna subtract what's going on with my reactants. I have two hydrogens again from the coefficient, and I have only one oxygen, and I'm gonna add those all together. And then whatever this total is, I will subtract from that total. So let's take a look, I'll take away my little 
sheet there. And again, the 69.95 directly from that table in your notes. The 130.7, the 205. Here we go. Hopefully my math is all correct. Please email me if it's not. Um, and when you figure it out, you find that the delta S for this is a negative value. It's about three, negative 326. All right, because it's negative, it means that the reaction is losing entropy. It's becoming more ordered. And we could have predicted that from the beginning, actually, because look, I'm taking gases and I'm turning them into a liquid. So that's a situation where you are become, certainly becoming more ordered. So maybe take a moment and pause the video and go on ahead and do the next question. All right, so we're back and hopefully our math is all the same and looks good for this one. And you find for this one, your delta S is about 188. Well, in this case, the sign of delta S is positive, which means that you are gaining entropy. So in this reaction, you are becoming more disordered. And that makes sense. You're going from, you know, you're creating more molecules. You're gonna have a little bit more going on there. All right. Okay, great. I hope you've enjoyed the first set of notes on uh, thermodynamics and please um, go on ahead to the second set of notes. Yeah.